Okay, uh, yeah, welcome to my talk, Tiny Music from the Video Card, Pitfalls when Making a GPU Software Synthesizer for Demo Scene Intros. I'm Seven, one of the coders from the Demo Scene Group Fulcrum. Um, I don't know if people know the Demo Scene, but uh, the Demo Scene makes non-interactive real-time animations for fun and to impress the audience because there are competitions for that. So it's like an, a program that shows like a video clip. Uh, they are made by a team, um, at least a coder and a musician, and optionally uh, 2D artists, 3D artists, multiple uh, musicians or coders. Uh, and an intro is a size-limited demo. They go from 64 kilobyte to, um, yeah, down to 32 bytes, but basically everything below from 1K and below is made by a single person. Um, musicians only play in 4K and, and higher. Um, as an example of what you can do in 4K, uh, I'll show you one of my preferred, my favorite uh, uh, intros, which is uh, Second Stage Boss. I'm there is yeah. So this is all procedurally generated. Uh, the, the models, the, the colors, the camera motion, the synchronization, uh, this is all 4 kilobytes of executable code. Um, yeah, this was entered in, I think, Tokyo Demo Fest 2016. It competed in the same category as the, the full-size demos and it won the competition. So this is really amazing. I suggest you watch it. Uh, uh, yeah, you watch it preferably if you have a fast enough computer as the executable because on YouTube you have compression and yeah, it doesn't look uh, as the pixels are not as pure as and it runs on your own machine. Uh, but yeah, how do people make something like this in 4K? Um, approximately half the size is taken up by the visuals, which is done with shaders. Shaders are... Um, tiny programs that run on your video card and calculate the color of a single pixel. So your video card has hundreds to thousands of cores and they all calculate colors of different pixels in parallel. Uh, yeah, OpenGL uses GLSL, um, DirectX uses HLSL, it's mostly the same. If you know shadertoy.com, that's like the YouTube for shaders. Uh, you can learn tons of stuff because you have like the, the effect and the, the code itself, so very good for learning. The audio in the 4K is done um, in Assembler using a specialized software synthesizer. There's Klinkster, Forklang, Oidos, uh, typically takes a kilobyte to a kilobyte and a half. And you have uh, a small stub of half a kilobyte about in whatever language that just opens a full screen window, hide the mouse, starts the music pre-calc and then launches your music and your visuals and checks if you have press escape to, to quit. Um, and all this stuff is compressed with a compressing linker, Krinkler, uh, made by the same guys who made the Klinkster Softsynth. Um, that's on Windows. Uh, on Linux, you have small and uh, other uh, and 1K pack and other compressors. Um, if you want to know how 4K intros are made in general, the n4k.github.io uh, page is what you want uh, to know. So, how do musicians and compose music for something like this? Um, there used to be some yeah, older techniques. You can just use the, the MIDI instruments from, um, from your operating system. There's byte beat, which is like a tiny formula that generates 8-bit noise patterns. Uh, you can abuse the, the media files that come with your operating system, but these are all very limited. Uh, musicians do not have a, a lot of choice in terms of either instruments or the notes you, you can uh, play. Uh, modern soft synths are all VSTIs, which are Virtual Studio Technology Instruments audio plugins. And you can use that with um, a digital audio workstation, which is audio software like Renoise, Cubase, Reaper. Um, in theory, 
these are uh, this is a standardized interface and you should be able to use any VSCI in any uh, workstation software practice um, so your soft synth generates the instrument samples uh, and once your song is done you will export this to assembler or object code and uh, you link it with Krinkler. So this is Renoise, uh, you have some instrument definitions there. Here you see your, uh, your notes in, in uh, Renoise, it's like based on old tracker software from the demo scene, so notes go from the top to the bottom. Some instruments have only one note column, others have several, because once you play a new note, the old one in the same column is cut off. So if you have an instrument like a piano that needs to hear multiple notes simultaneously, then you have to use several columns for that. Um, and so, yeah, you can either uh, select a specific waveform from on disk for your instrument, or you can use a plugin. Um, one of the more popular plugins is, is Vierklang, uh, which is basically a way to program your own instrument. It's very flexible, but quite complex. You have these operations which uh, put signals on a stack and then combine them and uh, it's quite difficult to learn uh, but extremely flexible. Um, but yeah, the musicians in our group don't really like to use it because it's, it's, you, you have to basically know uh, how to program the Intel floating point stack. Um, so given that already various synths exist, why make one on the GPU? Uh, I was hoping for it to be smaller because uniform data compresses better. If you have like a book of just English words and you compress it, it will compress better than a mixture of English and French words uh, mixed. And a normal intro already uses like normal assembly code, floating point assembly code your nodes data in binary format, then your strings with, um, yeah, with your shader, your GLSL, because these shaders are compiled by the video card driver. So you really ship your source code in your executable. Um, some intros use hand-coded shaders for audio. Uh, and for example, Second Stage Boss only used 841 bytes for the audio, which was really an eye-opener for me. To be clear, they are, they are not using note data. The, the musician used mathematical formulas to, uh, yeah, to program the entire music so it doesn't just uh, give you the freedom of using any note at any kind you want, but still this is uh, very interesting. I was also hoping it for it to be very fast because yeah, GPUs have thousands of cores. Um, and many CPU synths pre-calculate the music, so when you launch an, an intro, you have to wait like 30 seconds, a minute, to, uh, to get it started. I was hoping that it was also more flexible, like more, um, more possibilities to synchronize the visuals and uh, the music uh, together. But yeah, it was all one big jump into the unknown. And a problem I had is that um, you cannot do this work half. If I would make half a synth, then of course it would be smaller than all the existing synths. But yeah, you really have to do all the work before you can really know was it worth it. Um, so it took me about two years of low intensity uh, coding from time to time um, to something that is uh, usable. Um, I really wanted the, the plugin itself and the intro to share the same shader code because I was very afraid that the musician would hear one thing in his music program and then the intro would play something different. Um, but I wasn't quite sure if, if a, such a plugin can even run 3D code because yeah, it's inside an audio program that may have its own rendering going on and things like that. Um, it turns out you can do that, uh, but you must be aware that your, the audio program is going to call your plugin from random threads. Um, and uh, yeah, the big lesson is close your OpenGL context after each use, uh, because you can use OpenGL multi-threaded, but not 
not simultaneously uh, in two threads. So once you're done, done uh, in one thread, yeah, once you're done uh, calculating your music, close your context and then if, it's, if you're called in another thread, it will work. But it took me about a year to figure that out. Uh, the next question one was, um, can we get audio fast enough that there are no clicks or stutter? Because your audio program asks for like 50 millisecond blocks, which are 700 bytes at uh, 44.1 kilohertz. Um, and video cards are not good at um, uh, low latency tasks. The usual way a video card works is when you're doing a, a computer game, you send it a ton of data and then you say like okay this and now this data is for the next frame and your video card actually works in multiple frames in parallel like it's displaying one one frame and then it's calculating uh, the next one and maybe the next before that and then it's receiving commands for another so um yeah telling the, the video card like here is a task and i want it now that's really bad for for your uh, um yeah, using your pipeline video card architecture. Also, reading from from textures used to be, uh, from textures to the the CPU side used to be like ten times slower than um, writing to textures. Uh, but yeah, that worked fine. No clicks or stutter if I just use a simple sine wave. Yay! Um, then the next question is how many instruments could we possibly play at the same time? Because um, on this laptop with a, a quad-core uh, i7, um, simply playing silence uh, took 20% CPU usage, said Renoise. Um, a, a more recent version from Renoise improves that about to 10%, but um, all your audio programs show how busy your CPU is, because if you, if you go beyond 100%, it will start to glitch and stutter, and musicians hate that. Uh, so, yeah, that would limit us, yeah, but once you actually start node, start um, uh, computing nodes, not just silence, uh, yeah, that increases to maybe 21%. So it's really all waiting for the video card to send your data back and forth. Uh, but, but that would limit us to at most five instruments, that's not nice. Uh, but there exists such a thing as a multi-timbral plugin. Um, then you just tell, in this case, Reno is like, okay, my first instrument uses this plugin, <coughs> and all my other instruments use an alias to the same plugin. So you have only a single instance, <coughs> but you have to tell every instrument to use a different MIDI channel so that the plugin has an idea like this note on which instrument I, I, uh, should I play it. So the plugin bundles all notes you should currently hear, send them to the video card. The video card gives you a single buffer with all your instruments um, in it, and, and that just works. Then, once I knew that that would work, the question is like, how do we want our musicians to um, define instruments? Because you have all kind of uh, architectures from the vierklang Lego block style approach to uh, fixed pipelines. Um, musicians really want a nice UI and um, yeah, things like oscillators and, and yeah, things they recognize from, from synthesizers. So I decided to start porting Klingster. Klingster is uh, a fairly old uh, but quite popular uh, VSTI. It's fixed pipeline, all you have is sliders. Musicians love this. Just experiment with the sliders until it sounds good. Uh, it does not use filters, that's good because filters um, need to access multiple samples. <coughs> Sorry. So, um, if you simply want like to average your samples to filter out high frequencies, uh, you cannot do that on a GPU because your GPU calculates a single sample. It's not a single pixel, it's a single sample in your sound wave and it has no access to the other samples because these are being calculated in parallel. 
so yeah, I needed something that did not use filters. Um, <clears throat> I also wanted our musicians to be able to reuse Klingster instruments. Um, one thing that was uh, scary is that the developers of Klingster already said that they uh, did not consider a GPU port feasible because of precision problems. Uh, spoiler, they were right. <laughs> so, um, Klingster, how does this work? Um, at this point, I'm going to show you. So, this is basically a re-implementation of uh, Klingster, except you see all the sliders at the uh, same time, so you don't have to scroll. Um, one thing that I really wanted to do have some, is have some visual feedback on what, um, yeah, what is going on. Um, and yeah, I'm going to demonstrate a little bit. Uh, that's it. Um, I'm going to load like the most simple instrument in existence. Okay, so um, you start with uh, no. you start with an oscillator that gives you a wave. This can be a sine wave. Um, do I need to enable this keyboard? I have this selected, right? And now it doesn't want to do what... Uh, ah! Okay, I know it's, this, is the, this is the problem. Is it? Yeah. Okay, so this is just a, a sine wave. This is a sawtooth wave. So you have all these different kind of oscillators. Um, this is just noise. Um, and the next thing you can can do with this is uh, change the. Yeah, I'm going to. Yeah, detune has to do with layers. Pitch is just making it higher, higher or lower. Uh, which is not very interesting on its own, unless you start with decay. So if you have a decay, then it goes like from the bass pitch to the pitch from the note that you pressed. Um, can be uh, higher, lower. Bit, uh, it can also go like, um, yeah, like, um, exponentially up or down, something uh, uh, like that. Um, Klinkler is a Klinkster is a phase modulating synth, so it doesn't use just a bass wave, but also a modulation wave. Your modulation wave is going to slow down or speed up your bass wave. So um, let's uh, yeah, let's put this back to zero. I think I could. No. Yeah, this is an old version of the plugin because it uh, did something strange. Yeah. Yeah, very back. So this is the usual uh, wave. So index determines how much influence your modulation wave has on your bass wave. So here you can see the, the mix. So basically, uh, if you consider your waves as arrays, uh, your you take a value from the modulation wave and then you use that <coughs> as an extra, uh, an extra offset in your base wave. Um, and your base wave does have its own, uh, its own pitch and pitch decay. Um, uh, and you can also use decay so that uh, you start with a lot of modulation and then go to more pure frequency. Uh, defining feature of um, uh, Klingler is the layers. If you use layers, your sound is calculated several times but with slightly different parameters. The frequency of your bass wave can... can, uh, can now you hear that there are like multiple frequencies uh, mixed together. And you can do the same with uh, the, the modulation wave. That's 
kind of more yeah, vibrating or more echoing sound. Um, <clears throat> you have a random seed uh, for this and you, uh, you also have the index spread so every layer can have slightly different index value. Um, there, yeah, there's a random seed that allows you to um, yeah, pick a, a slightly different uh, slightly different sound. Uh, attack, decay, sustain, release um, are the basically the volume of your sound. Um, attack determines how fast your music will go from from not playing to playing at full volume. So if it's very short, uh, it's like instantly, and if it's uh, like this, then it takes uh, a bit longer to, to go to full, full volume. For some instruments, um, if you press a, a key on a piano, then the volume goes to zero after a while. But if you press a key on an organ, then it just keeps going forever. And sustain is the, the volume of um, how loud the, the note uh, is as if, if it just keeps going forever. So yeah, you can change this. And then decay determines how quickly your music goes from the maximum volume to the, um, to the sustain level. Can be long, can be slow. And the release is once you uh, stop pressing the key, how quickly does the, the music um, stops playing. Um, gain is uh, just a volume, but in, an, um, in a way that does not introduce clipping. It's not just multiplying your entire wave with two, because your, your sound wave has to be between one and minus one. If it goes above that in absolute value, you will hear clipping. So gain um, makes your makes your music more quiet or loud or, or uh, louder without introducing clipping. Um, and then delay is um, just a way to have echoes. Um, Yeah, like this. So that's the entire uh, synth. Um, <clears throat> I think we covered everything here. Oscillators, attack the case, say release envelope, gain. Yeah, panning is just stereo, but you cannot hear that on the Beamer speakers. Uh, pitch, pitch decay, phase modulation, the layers, uh, the delay line. The delay line is the only part where my synth is an improvement over Klingster. Because um, Klingster allows instruments to use uh, delay, but every instrument that uses delay must have the same settings. It just pre-calculates just instruments that need delay, then it runs a single uh, delay line filter on it sequentially. Um, and then it calculates the rest of the instruments and add all that together. Uh, a GPU cannot do this sequential stuff because you don't have access to previous uh, samples. Um, so I fake it. Um, I just calculate uh, the same instrument three or four times on different positions and add all that together. That is more flexible because now you can have uh, uh, like a very short echo for a reverb effect on one instrument and have like clearly defined echoes for, for another. Um, but the downside is that I really, now I'm really calculating the same stuff multiple times and it's much slower. Um, same, uh, Klingster has a filter. Uh, it doesn't calculate at 44.1 kilohertz. It calculates at four times the resolution and then averages the result with a 24 sample filter like a Gaussian curve. Um, and that's quite noticeable for some instruments. I had to use the same technique as for filter, just calculate it 24 times, which is expensive. And of course, if you combine this filter with the, uh, with the delay line, you have like 24 times three. So yeah, I just, instruments have to use either the filter or the delay line um, just to get, get it done in a reasonable time. Um, 
So the actual shader code then starts to look like this, like this is for the oscillators. You have a, uh, yeah, your phase is uh, just your time. And then, uh, yeah, you uh, take the, they can say everything is, 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 yeah, every oscillator is like a cycle. So you just take the, the fractional part and then, yeah, you go, this is for the sine wave. This is for the, the sow tooth. Um, it's written as, as fragments because <clears throat> in an intro, uh, if a feature is not used, it's not included in the shader. If you have a song without any square waves, then we'll just leave that out. Um, this music pass still needs to be minimized, uh, so it's not perfectly shared, but yeah, this is code that is easy to, uh, to develop, to experiment with. Um, <clears throat> we still need to compress all these things and then it's important to know a little bit about Krenkler compression. Krenkler, not Klinkster. Uh, if Krenkler is like halfway done with decompressing your intro, it has statistics on all the data that has previously been decompressed. And then it uses a context, which in the case of um, Krenkler is your last eight decoded bytes. And it looks at those eight decoding bytes and it looks at all the statistics from the data it has seen before and then tries to guess what is the next thing that, that uh, comes next. Um, and if it guesses correctly, then you, uh, you need very little bytes to encode your data. If it um, misguesses, then you need more, more bits. So it is very important to make your code predictable. And that's even more important than just trying to make your code as small as possible by removing a single byte somewhere in an exotic way. Um, so the plugin only ne needs to play the nodes that are active, at most 100 nodes. Uh, but the intro needs to calculate the entire song. Um, so how do we organize this data? Conceptually, that's a stream of events with the time, the instrument, the note, the duration of the note, and possibly how loud the note is. Um, but that doesn't compress very well. We want to first split it per instrument and then have separate streams, one with just the times, just the notes, just the velocities. And things like your time, you should delta encode. If you have like percussion on every four beats, you do not want to compress four, eight, twelve, and so on, you want to compress four, 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 four. So you just take the difference um, in time. Also, your note duration, you typically don't need to store because the next note is going to cut off the previous one. You only need to store if the musician has stopped the note and then there's some silence. And then you use a note off event that is just like play note zero and that doesn't play anything. It just stops the previous note. So that gives you something like this. So yeah, this is ta the time for a certain instrument. You see that's like 0, 1, 3, 1, 3, 1, 3, 1. This is very predictable. Same with the, the notes. It's like for this instrument, 45, note off, 48, note off, 45, note off. This is, yeah, predictable. And the velocity is for long stretches the same all the way. Uh, if you would mix all this together, like interleave it, the, the compressor would have a very hard time um, yeah, starting to see the patterns in the data. Um, but this was actually my biggest mistake. I put all the node data in the shader. Do not do that. Um, shader compilers do not like huge arrays of constant data. You're supposed to send it to your shader in a texture or something. Um, there is a constructor limit. You can put at most 2048 items in an array, no matter if it's an int or a vec4. Um, yeah, we need it much more so then you start with multiple uh, arrays. Uh, and then NVIDIA really limits um, the amount of times you can access your array. And it's like the, the amount of times you access your array times the size of your array. You can try to, to make more, to make multiple smaller um, arrays, but it, it really doesn't help. I think what it does is every array access is probably inlined as a giant if else statement or something like that. 
<coughs> so don't do that. Uh, I, I had like three array accesses if I put everything in one uh, big shader and ones that then actually work, I had crazy link times because your driver both compiles and links the code and it took like 15 minutes and it looked like the program was crashed, but uh, yeah, it wasn't, it was just linking. No, but I think nobody actually does that and yeah, it's much better to store your nodes binary and access it as a texture and it also compresses better because um, yeah, in, so in a situation like this, at least half of your context is going to be commas, which makes it much harder for the for Krinkler to yeah, make accurate predictions. Um, so uh, once the musician is done with the, the song, uh, I have a converter that takes the Reno's file, which is actually just a zipped XML file, uh, and the, some instrument definitions. <coughs> this converter um, reads the, the song data and cleans it up because Reno's can have, for example, all your percussion in one uh, stream, uh, like your hi-hats and your drums. And um, yeah, I clean it up so I have one instrument per stream. I remove a new instrument. I check which features are used, like yeah, the gain or the delay. If your song doesn't use it, it's not included. And then it generates a shader and an assembler file. Uh, then the shader has to be optimized with a shader optimizer. There's like a shader minifier, but yeah, uh, I, I made my own. So it renames variables and functions. It removes a needed white space, parentheses, scopes, all very handy if you generate code with a code generator because yeah, that's almost always going to be very non-optimal. Constant folding. And um, it's also important to uh, optimize the music and the visual shaders together. If like the music shader uses A, B, C as variable names and the visual sh shader uses uh, X, Y, Z, uh, then that's not going to compress as, as well as when all shaders try to use the same variable names. So then you have something like this, which is uh, not quite um, user friendly anymore if you want to to edit this. Um, and then the intro itself uh, has to compile your shaders, create a sound device, render music to a 4K by 4K texture in, in GPU memory. It's a uh, two channel textures for the left and right audio samples. Um, and then the, yeah, you just read this back uh, with GL read pixels and you send that buffer to the sound device. And then you see your uh, intro. Except for Windows, Windows timeout detection and recovery. Display driver stopped responding and has recovered. Uh, whenever your GPU is busy for like more than, I think two seconds by default, Windows resets it and your program has crashed. Um, so uh, the music pre-calc in a 4K by 4K texture took about 20 to 30 seconds. So the solution is not to draw a giant square over your texture, but to draw several strips and then to call GL flush because your driver um, is not going to, to send every triangle or every draw command separately to the video uh, card. It's going to bundle them until it thinks it has enough work and then you run into the exact same problem. Uh, so GL flush. In conclusion, um, yeah, this is currently only used for a single intro yet, uh, which was an 8K. Good stress test because an 8K uh, soundtrack is much bigger than a 4K. You had 11 instruments, uh, more than 10,000 notes, uh, triggered a lot of uh, difficult edge cases. Um, but yeah, the feedback was mostly positive. The musician was happy. Unfortunately, on the compo machine, there was like a stutter in one instrument. Uh, but it was an online party. People blamed the network. Yay! Uh, so... Um, yeah, it definitely can be smaller than a CPU synth, but it's hard to speak about general data from, from one song. Uh, like for example, this timeout detection and recovery added like 50 bytes to, uh, to solve that problem, um, depending on the, the song and the complexity and the amount of notes, it might not be needed to, to do that. Um, but yeah, it's to have really apples to apples comparison, you should 
implement the same intro with two different synths and optimize them both to hell and back. And yeah, that takes a lot of time. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, the Kingsurf pipeline is not quite optimal for the GPU. And there are indeed precisions if you have very fast or slow decay or if you have a high or low detune. Uh, there are also some optimizations I wanted to do that a random number generator was uh, in the way. Um, I really feel it's kind of over-engineered. Your, your song is going to need maybe a few hundred numbers at most. Um, so I will keep working on it in the future, but maybe I'll drop Klingster compatibility. Um, yeah, so um, if I load the patch, then... Yeah, okay. That was the, the song in the, the intro. <coughs> I put it a little bit quieter. And uh, yeah, I don't know if there are any questions about anything uh, synth related. Shoot. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we can talk. Uh, it's no problem for me to send you some uh, test code that you can try to get working. At the moment, there are a lot of pitfalls and ugly edge cases, and so, so I'm not going to open source this. Uh, um, I think it would uh, cause a lot of frustrated musicians at the current state. <coughs> yeah, any other questions? Have you, um, have you tried using double precision on the GPU? Is uh, that, that is not really. Um, it's that's not. Uh, that's simply not uh, not supported. For example, sine, the the sinus function, does not exist with doubles. Uh, that's specifically in an OpenGL specification. It says like uh, trigonometric functions uh, for doubles are not supported. They are not even downcast to floats. You get an error if you use double. It's, I, I talked the same, like, just uh, have a define that changes every float to doubles and see if that works, but no, this gives an error. Um, so yeah, you would at least, at least need to start with things like Taylor approximations of your sine functions. Uh, so yeah. No, just subtract. Uh, Multiples of 2 pi from your input. Yeah. Do that to the double domain and then use the single precision. Yeah, but the precision is more with the um, um, with the decay. It uses exponential, uh, and with uh, it goes from it, it has a range of like 20 octaves, which is uh, at least 20 bits of, of precision. Um, on top of the actual notes you play, um, so yeah, you uh, you definitely have have precision problems just with your timing without even going into the oscillators. Um, one thing I originally did was uh, having the f the frequency of my oscillator always start like from the beginning of the song instead of like from the beginning of your note. But yeah, at 44,000 uh, samples per second in a song that has four minutes, uh, at the end of your song, you start to, start to run out of precision. And then you start to have like multiple samples that are actually on the same time or that skip some samples. So yeah, I, <laughs> uh, yeah, there are definitely a lot of extra things that I haven't touched upon yet um, in, in this talk. But yeah, we're already, over, over the limit, if there are people who want to uh, go to the soldering seminar, uh, yeah, go ahead. Um, 
if you want to ask more questions, feel free. Yeah. Yeah, so for so let's say if you simply want to average two two uh, samples together or or say let's say three. So you have yeah, you have like a rolling average and that will filter out certain high frequencies. if if you for for a specific for a specific uh, oscillator, probably yes. But if you look at the entire pipeline, uh, it was already quite difficult for me. Uh, I'm, uh, to, uh, to do the, the decay was actually implemented in, in, Klinkler, in Klinkster um, yeah, as an operation on the previous sample. But thanks to uh, Wolfram Alpha, I could kind of integrate it and get the correct formula for that. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, it might be possible, but it's probably beyond my combined audio plus mathematics knowledge. Um, especially if you then want like arbitrary filters, like if you want low, low pass and high pass and with different uh, parameters. Um, I think if, we, if I want to do that, I really have to do it like in, in multiple render passes. Like yeah, first render the sound as is, and then have a render it again with the um, with the first pass as an input in the texture, and then it can read out all the previous samples from that. But even then, if you have a sample that um, like some exponentially decaying echo that just goes on forever, uh, some simple averaging may take like yeah, 20 samples, that's doable, but something that just takes all the previous sounds in account, that is not going to work. You said that the problem is also that it's going to be in parallel. Um, but the video card also at some point was like anti-aliasing and stuff, right? So that they combine different pixels. Um, mm -hmm. Could you use such a kind of thing as a filter or is that not possible? Uh, there's a number of different uh, anti-aliasing techniques, but uh, they mostly work on um, a combination of your pixel shaders and your vertex shaders. Like if you really draw a triangle uh, and you have like multi-sampling enabled, then it will actually draw like instead of one, in, instead of calling your, your pixel shader once for a pixel, it will uh, call it, for example, four times, but with slight offsets and then combine the results in itself. Um, I, I haven't really talked of, of that. It might be possible, but uh, I'm afraid it will take more space. Uh, yeah, all the extra complexity is, is going to cost you uh, extra time. Yeah, no more questions? Yeah, okay, then. You yeah. this, now you're like using one shader class to compute multiple samples. Yeah. But if you just would compute only one, you could have a previous one as an input. So you can do recursion. But you need to compute one sample in one shader. Yeah, but, but then, but, but then yeah. But then you're using the parallelism. Exactly. You do, like, if you have like 30 voices, or 100 voices, or even better, 1,000 voices, yeah. that would be your parallel. Yeah, voice. okay, yeah, 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 indeed. But uh, I don't know how much musicians <laughs> do uh, <laughs> a thousand voices, uh, because you still need then like a thousand note streams, and I don't think that's going to fit easily in, in 4K or 8K. Um, that's also <laughs> Yeah, indeed, you need then 4,000, uh, 44,000 and 100 passes for a single second of audio. That is also going to be a problem. Um, That's your main problem because just computing 1,000 voices is like, uh, it's uh, like breakfast for a, for a GPU. Uh, yeah. <laughs>
But uh, so yeah, I you, think they all are doing the same algorithm with different parameters. It's just mm -hmm. what the GPU is made for. Yeah, but uh, yeah, the the practical organization. I'm thinking that maybe compute shaders would be possibly better because they have more freedom in, in writing and reading from textures. But uh, yeah, I had to start somewhere. I just wanted to see, is it possible? And it's possible, but not trivial. And same with the benefits. Like it, um, I think it's, it's worth working a bit more on it, but it's not like, yes, this will be better in all cases. Mm -hmm. Okay, then thank you for your attention. Yeah. <laughs>